So in this video, we're going to talk about additional analytic properties of conics. Yes, there are still more. So we're going to, for notation, I just put a little box over here to remember because there's a lot of things that look really similar. So D1, remember, we defined with the focus directrix properties, the distance from XY to the directrix. D2 is the distance from XY to the focus. Um, D is a new thing here. It's the directrix distance from the center. Um, and it's going to go along with like the A, B, and the C as a key kind of properties or metrics of, of a conic. And then L1 and L2 are the distances from X, an arbitrary point X, Y, to focus one, focus two. You'll note that um, L1 or L2 will often be D2, well, it will always be D2, since D2 is the distance from X, Y to, you know, one of the foci. So let's begin. Um, we're going to, for this first property, we're going to choose our arbitrary point xy is not going to be so arbitrary. So we're going to choose xy to actually be, and I know my ellipse is kind of circular, so uh, this vertical axis is going to be the semi-major axis, okay, so the, the smaller of the two. So this point is going to be 0b, okay. So um, the property that I'm going to derive here with the point 0b uh, it works for all con uh, any point x, y, so it's always true for this conic, for an ellipse. Um, and actually, all these things are also true for hyperbolas, um, even though we're going to derive them in the context of the ellipse. So this is focus 1. I'm going to call it uh, f1. This is my focus 2. And I know that this distance and this distance, since 0b is exactly in the middle, these two distances have to be the same, right? This is L1, this is L2, L1 has to be the same as L2. If you think back to when we talked about ellipses, we said that the constant sum of an ellipse always is equal to twice um, the distance from the center to the vertex. So it's equal to uh, the major the length of the major axis. So that means um, that L1 and L2, since they're equal and they have to add to 2A, L1 must be equal to A and L2 must be equal to A. Okay. And additionally, I know that the distance from this point 0B to my directrix is equal to D, right? Because this distance down here, I just kind of ran out of space, but I can try up here. This distance is going to be equal to D. So if I can apply my focus directrix property and say that D2 is equal to ED1 and plug stuff in. So D2, in this case, the distance from the uh, point that I chose, 0B, to one of my foci is going to be A, so I have A here, equals E times the distance to the directrix from my point is equal to D, which means E is equal to A over D. And this is the first of my uh, new relationships involving eccentricity. Okay. Um, now I can uh, go further here because I'm going to draw another ellipse that will illuminate some more properties. So let's, ellipse like this, draw another bad ellipse. Okay, I'm gonna label the focus, which is C going to label the vertex, which is A, and I'll draw my directrix here. And this, right, this distance will be D. Distance from here to here is D. So this line is X equals D. Okay. So um, let's do some calculations here. So my point that I'm going to choose this time to use is going to be uh, A, A0 instead of 0b. So that means that the distance to the focus, I'm going to choose this focus. So this distance is going to be d2. The distance to the directrix here, this is going to be d1. So if I use my focus directrix property, and first I'm going to calculate what d1 and d2 are, I should be able to get another relationship. So d1 is going to be equal to, well, if I want the length of this segment here, I'm going to take D minus A, and what I'll be left with is this. So D minus A, right? Because this whole thing is D, and just this part here is A from here onward. So if I do this minus this, then we get the segment. 
D2, we use similar logic. If this full piece is A and this piece here is C, I'm going to do A minus C. Then I'm going to set up my focus directrix property. So I have D2 equals E D1. Plug everything in. I have A minus C equals E times D minus A. Uh, I'm going to distribute the E. So I have A minus C equals E D minus A. And if I look back, I already said uh, that E D was actually, oh, sorry, this should be E A. E A, I'm distributing. Um, this E D is equal to A here. So I have A minus C equals A minus E A. Um, so now what I can do is I can cancel out my A's. My A's will go away. And I get C equals E A, which means that E equals C over A. So this is another relationship. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these properties together. Because if E is equal to A over D, and E is also equal to C over A, then I should be able to say that A over D is equal to C over A. And this gives me that D is equal to A squared over C. Or another way you'll see it is A is equal to the square root of CD. These are the two most popular forms of that relationship. Okay. So these are the uh, some new key properties uh, that are useful because now if you're given some conic, right, you're given the equation of an ellipse, you can easily extract A, B, and C from that equation. And once you have A, B, and C, you can then use that using this equation. You can get D, um, and then you can calculate the eccentricity, or you can just go straight to the eccentricity if you'd like as well. So basically all of these properties that we've been talking about are all connected to each other and what this does is it widens the range of information that you can be given at the beginning of a problem that you can then use to get every other piece of information about a conic okay so we're going to erase all of this and I'm gonna talk about the lattice rectum of an ellipse so the lattice rectum of an ellipse, so the lattice rectum, we talked about lattice rectum for hyperbola. For an ellipse, it is twice y when x equals c. And what that means is, just like for the parabola, uh, the lattice rectum is the vertical line segment, or not necessarily vertical if your ellipse is, is vertical, but it's the line segment that is... Um, uh, perpendicular to your major axis, axis, and it passes through the focus. So if I have an ellipse, say my focus is here is C, and my ellipse is like this, then my lattice rectum passes like this through the vertex. So um, yeah, if I say that this is equal to, you know, I have an arbitrary point uh, x, y, I guess it's not, not that arbitrary, but a point x, y up here, then this height of the lattice rectum is going to be y. So the full lattice rectum is 2y, and just the distance from the focus to my point, my end point of the lattice rectum, is that. Now, because L, uh, lattice rectum is twice y when x equals c, if I write down the equation of an ellipse, right, so I have like x squared over a squared plus uh, y squared over b squared equals 1, and I know that when x equals c, the last rectum is twice y, I can write c squared over a squared, if I make a substitution of c for x, plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Then what I can do is I can try to solve this for y squared. And if I do, I get y squared is equal to, um, uh, what was I doing? Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so we're going to say this is equal to uh, 1 minus c squared over a squared times b squared. And to get a common denominator here, I'm going to make this a, a squared over a squared. So I have y squared equals a squared minus c squared divided by a squared times b squared. And if we think back to one of our uh, key relationships of the ellipse between a, b, and c, I know that a squared minus b squared, this numerator here, is actually equal to b squared which means that y squared is equal to b squared times b squared, which is b to the fourth, divided by a squared. So now if I just take the square root of everything, I get that the length of the lattice rectum 
uh, is going to be equal to 2b squared over a, right? Or I shouldn't say is equal to 2y. There we go. Since y is equal to b squared over a. So if we know that the height here is b squared over a, and we know the lattice, lattice rectum is twice y when x equals c, um, then what I've done here is I've said, okay, well, when x equals c, let's figure out what y is. And if x equals c, y is b squared over a. And then I said the lattice rectum has to be twice that. So the length of the lattice rectum for both an ellipse or a hyperbola um, is going to be equal, equal to um, 2b squared over a. So remember all the things that we did here that apply to an ellipse uh, also work for a hyperbola. So let's look at an example and see how we can try to use some of these new properties to solve problems that maybe before would have been too difficult to solve, or we wouldn't have enough information to solve them. Uh, so, oops. let's say I have an equation that looks like this. I have 2x squared plus 3y squared minus 4x plus 12y minus 4 equals 0. What I want to do is get pretty much everything. I want to take this, I want to identify what conic this is, I want to find the length of its axes, I want to find the focal radius, the directrix distance, the eccentricity, the, and the lattice rectum. And I'm going to show you that now that we have the relationships, we can actually get everything we want from this. So if we complete the square, I'm not going to do it out, you guys should know how to complete the square at this point. Um, if you want the practice, please pause the video and go ahead and do that. Um, when you complete the square, you get uh, an ellipse, you get x minus 1 squared over 9 plus y plus 2 squared over 6 equals 1. And from here, I can get everything. I know that a is going to be equal to 3, square root of 9. b is equal to the square root of 6. c is equal to, uh, using my relationship between a squared, b squared, and c squared, uh, c is going to be equal to the square root of 3. Okay. B squared minus A squared. Uh, and then, or sorry, A squared minus B squared. Flip that. Um, and then once I have A, B, and C, I can get my eccentricity. Because I know that eccentricity is equal to C divided by A. So eccentricity is going to be root 3 over 3. And because I want to graph this, I'm going to get a decimal for this, which is about 0.577. And I can also get the directrix, right? D is equal to A squared over C, which is 3 root 3 which is about 5.196. And finally, I can get the uh, length of my lattice rectum, which is 2b squared over a, and in this case, it's going to be equal to 4. And with all of this information, we can draw a really accurate picture of this ellipse. So let's try to do that. I know that my ellipse is centered at 1, negative 2. Which is going to be here. I know that uh, my vertices are going to be three units away in either direction. So one, two, three. One, two, three. I know it's horizontal because uh, the term underneath my x squared is larger than the term underneath my y squared. A is bigger than b. So I'm going to have a horizontal major axis. Um, I know that my minor axis is going to be root 6 up. Uh, root 6 is going to be a little bit over, you know, just like just under between 2 and 3. So we'll go 1, 2, let's say like here. And then 1, 2, go like here. 1, I know my foci are going to be root 3 away. Um, so we're going to go like 1 and a little more, we'll say. This seems about right, yeah. A little more, almost two, very close. Uh, and then I also know the length of my lattice rectum is four. So I go up two units to here, down two units to here. Uh, same thing here. I go up two units, uh, down two units. Oh, I think is, yeah, this should be a little higher. That's what's messing me up. My B should be greater than two units away. So one, two, closer to like here. 
Okay. Oh, and I did this one under the vertex. Man, I'm bad at drawing ellipses. Okay, so my, my minor axis should be like here. And then I wanna get rid of these because I accidentally drew them under the vertices instead of the foci. So again, lattice rectum is equal to four. So two above, two below. And now I have a bunch of points on the exterior of my ellipse and I can very easily draw it. So I can go like this, or if you are good at drawing, you could very easily draw it. And there we go, get a very accurate point picture of an ellipse because I'm able to generate so many points that are relevant to it based on these new relationships that I have. I know my vertices, right? I can label these if I wanted to, but I'm lazy, so I'm not going to. Um, I can get the endpoints of my minor axis. I can get my foci. You, I can then use the fact that I know the lattice rectum is four units long to say that, okay, well, that means two units above the focus, there's going to be a point on the ellipse. Two units below the focus, there's going to be a point on the ellipse. And the same thing for the other focus. And then we can just connect all the dots and get a, a really decently accurate picture of the ellipse. Okay, let's do one more. Let's say this time I want to find, that was be example two, find the equation of the conic with, uh, let's say it has an eccentricity of 1.25 and it has foci of, uh, it has foci at 6, 2 and negative 4, 2. And I want to identify what it is. So right away, eccentricity um, is larger than 1. So that means it is going to be a hyperbola. So we have a hyperbola here because E is greater than 1. The center here uh, is going to be HK, and that's going to be equal to 1, 2, where we just are finding the point that is halfway between our two foci. right? Uh, so then I can say, okay, well, I have the center. Um, I can find my C value. Right? If I do 6 minus 1, uh, I can find the distance between the center and the foci. Or, you know, I can do the same thing with uh, this focus. So 6 minus 1 is 5, so C is going to be equal to 5. My focus is 5 units away from my center. So now I have C and I have E. And I know that E is equal to C over A. So A is equal to C over E. So that means I'm going to have 5 over 1.25 and that's equal to four. Then I can say, okay, well, b squared is c squared minus a squared, so that means that b is gonna be equal to three. Then I can find the location of my directrix. I know that d is equal to a squared over c, which is 16 over five, and that's equal to 3.2. And now I can write down my uh, ellipse equation. I mean, I could do it even before I found D, right? You don't need D to find the ellipse equation. Um, I'm just doing it to be very thorough. Or sorry, not the ellipse equation, hyperbola, hyperbola equation. Um, just want to show that you can get really extract all the information from this setup. So then my equation is going to be x minus 1 squared divided by 16 uh, because my transverse axis is horizontal. So x squared is going to be the positive term minus y minus 2 squared divided by 9 is equal to 1. And that would be the equation of my hyperbola. Okay, so those are uh, the additional property, analytic properties of conics that uh, come in handy. And now you can really take very limited information about a conic and use it to generate absolutely everything else that you have. Thanks for watching.